And so, in this whole journey then of spirituality, so now we have uh, sweats that we do, and we pray to Tunkashila, we invite Jesus and the Holy Spirit to come and meet with us as men, so we can be better husbands, so we can be better fathers. So all of us know we have huge alcohol issues, dependency issues, uh, we've got huge issues in terms of self-identity, self-hatred, all those things that underlie the, the suicide and the abuse and all of that. And so being married to my wife for 32 years, raising our four sons to be respectful human beings, to honor their mom, their dad, their aunties, uncles, their traditional ways, but to not force them. So, so the Creator has been gracious and kind to us as a husband, as a wife, as parents. Uh, so when we sit in the sweats, uh, we confess our sins to one another. Uh, we confess our struggles, the pain of our journey. So we have the four go-rounds, you know, so that we come in and we pray and we give Creator thanks for our life and our families and all that we have. And the second go-round, uh, we pray for our communities and things happening in our country. The third go-round, we confess the things that we're struggling with and pray for one another. Uh, and then the fourth go-round, we just ask the Creator to lead us in that time of prayer. <clears throat> but if you do that every week with these group of individuals, women can be praying together uh, in, in that way. Uh, that isn't any different than meeting in the church building on Wednesday night, right? There's no such thing as a biblical architectural design. You know, there's no such thing as a biblical language. English is not the language of the Bible. English is just the language of English speakers, that's all. Uh, and yet we want to universalize English as a language in its relationship to the Bible. And say God speaks best in English. Only to English speakers. <laughs> And then for really old people with a really old God, then God speaks best in King James English. <laughs> and, um, so I have some theories about neo-colonialism, the new kind of colonialism. And so as a, as a unshika, pitiful, ikche uh, wichasha, this common man, here's my humble opinion that you may like or not like, but... So neo is new, right? Colonialism. The neo-colonialism in the church uh, still can be seen in the insistence of people using the King James Version of the Bible. Now the King James Version represents a period of the evolution of the English language that, and people would say it's the authorized version of the Bible, right? Well, it's only the authorized version of, for English speakers. Spanish people don't have an authorized version. Russian people don't have an authorized version. Uh, Lakota, none of us have an authorized version. So why would God limit himself to the King James Version of the revelation of himself in print? That's neo-colonialism. Uh, and so I don't use the King James, and I don't encourage people to. I mean, if you want to use it as a literary piece, then have at it. But I like the NIV, which is the New Indian version uh, of, the, of the, the New Testament. It makes a lot more sense to me. So trying to rescue the, the talk about creative theology uh, out of its colonial abstract and philosophical constructs is a journey that many of us are on. But in the world of education, period, I, I want to be able to pass on to my children's children and their children ways of talking about creator and out of a, of a uh, Christian context that it's safe to be Indian again. But all over the world, so here in a couple weeks, uh, September, is the seventh world Christian gathering of indigenous people that's being hosted this time in uh, Jerusalem, Israel. So we'll have a couple thousand people from 30, 40 countries all over the world for eight days who will gather together to celebrate the life that we have and Creator uh, as we follow the Jesus way. So a number of tribes around North America are sending canoes uh, and the airplane, and so, the whole, and so there's an ocean going waka or canoe coming out of the Polynesian people group. So to open the whole gathering, you have all these indigenous canoes that row or paddle into Tel Aviv uh, to begin the gathering. And then we're building a sweat lodge, or a couple of them, on the Jordan River where Jesus was supposedly baptized uh, by John the Baptist. So we're going to have some sweats 
uh, right there where they baptized Jesus, and then you can jump in the Jordan River if you want. And then we're uh, going to build a traditional Six Nations longhouse in the old uh, part of the city of Jerusalem as a place of prayer, as a place of worship. And African nations are bringing all of their stuff. And we have a large delegation from Papua New Guinea, from Erie and Jaya, uh, who are bringing all of their cultural ways because at this point in the history of the world, and the evolution of the conversation of God, that things are moving away from a colonial model. And I'm going to Africa uh, here in about five weeks, and, and there will be about three or four hundred African leaders uh, gathered together to talk about um, what will post-colonial Christianity in Africa look like for the next generation. So they're trying to break away from neo-colonialism, so the colonizers went home except here, uh, they liked it so much, so uh, God bless you as you enjoy the fruit of our land. And, uh, but in Kenya, they, they sort of went home, and Rwanda, they went home, and in other parts of the world, they went home, but the structures they built stayed there, and those tru structures are still oppressive uh, because they're not from the land or from the people. So neo-colonial structures still exist, especially in Christianity. So you got people in 100 degree heat, 100 degree humidity, who still wear suits and ties to church because that's, how, that's like the official uniform of the church. And they're oppressed, they're dying. As soon as the church is over, they rip that stuff off because it's killing them, but that's how you're supposed to do it. And the same with music. You could go to many African nations and close your eyes and you think you're in a Baptist church in Bismarck. <laughs> Because uh, it sounds just like where it came from. I was with these, these guys up in Walpole Island, um, up in Canada, this all Indian church, right? So I closed my eyes, and I could have been in the Appalachians, uh, musically, because that's how the music was. And so we had some great talks afterwards of where's, where's your indigenous music? If Jesus really does grow from the inside out, then the gospel needs to not be a potted plant that you bring and you put it in our dirt. But the gospel needs to be a seed that you come and you plant in the soil and soul of our lives. So that what grows out of us is an indigenous plant that reflects everything that we are as peoples, just like the Europeans did. <laughs> 